What's going on gamers? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. It's your host Cody, and in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys how to handle randomness, also known as RNG, in Fortnite. Now I know how annoying lousy RNG can feel. If there was a way to get rid of it entirely, I'd spill the beans, trust me. But we can't wholly eliminate randomness from our matches. There will always be situations where the game's unpredictable behavior makes things not turn out our way. Whether that's from getting poor loot or having the zone spawn super far away, still, there are ways to become more consistent and minimize how randomness impacts our games. And consistency is what it is all about, am I right guys? But I gotta ask for our question of the day. What do you think is the most frustrating part of Fortnite's randomness? As an unfortunate bloom, no heals, or far zones. For me, it's gotta be the lack of shields out of chess. But let me know what you think in the comments. And be sure to check out ProGuides.com for more. We got courses, tips, and tricks to help you study and improve at the game. Plus, available 24-7, you can play with coaches that can teach you precisely what you've gotta do to improve. Like the video and make sure you're subbed to the channel. Then, to find out more, follow the link in the description or visit ProGuides.com. First up, Zone Randomness. Oh my gosh, you know those times where you land near the edge of the map, like maybe at Retail or Slurpee, then once the first save zone gets revealed, you're just like, oh great, guess I'm now playing Marathon Simulator. Yeah, those moments. Well, I can't promise you that you'll never take storm damage again, but I can give you some tips on how to get a better grasp on zone RNG. For zones one to three, you can reduce the chances you'll have to take a long distance trek by playing the center of the zone. Since the first circle's unpredictable, your best chance is landing somewhere near the middle of the map. It's why areas like Frenzy Farms and the unnamed Center Island are such popular landing spots, despite not having a lot of loot or anything else to really offer because the first zone is pretty much guaranteed to be close to or on one of these locations. Not always, but in most cases. And even if it isn't, the run becomes a lot shorter, meaning you'll have more time to loot up, harvest materials, and gather whatever else you need. Now, it's definitely still viable to land on the outskirts and other areas that might not get zone favored. But in those situations, you risk getting a far circle. So unless you've got some map mobility, like a boat or the steamy stack towers, you've got to be prepared to rotate early. Rather than waiting until the very last second to head to the safe zone, give yourself time, like an extra 60 or 90 seconds. Not only will it help you avoid storm fighters and mid-game engagements, but it will allow you to get set up for the second and third circles. In these ones, you'll generally want to head to elevated positions situated near the center of the zone. You don't have to waste mats and build a base if you don't feel threatened or anything. Most important is being in the center area. We all know Tifu as a Fortnite legend and his knowledge of rotations is pretty much unmatched. Take a look at how he positions in the third circle of this scrim match. He is smack dab in the middle of it, on top of a rooftop with a large one by one for an extra height advantage and protection. He's right in the center so that no matter where the zone appears, he'll be an equal distance from all directions. And when that circle does arrive, it actually ends in the worst spot for them. But even with that, it's not a bad run. Compare that to if they had been on the northern edge or to the west. He'd have to pass through so many more teams to reach safety. And this is pretty much the opposite of what you want with this many players alive. So the center zone rule applies up until the fourth circle. Once you reach that, from here on out, positioning near the edge is perfectly fine. You're basically taking a gamble that the next zone, aka the one that's half outside the storm, will be on top of you. If it isn't, then well, pff, that sucks. But there's little incentive to box up in the center here since you will be required to run no matter what. Instead, base up early to play it safe and gamble on having the zone spawn on top of you. Next up, the dreaded weapon RNG. I am talking about those times where you can't find a shotgun or you get a sniper out of your first chest. Ah. No one likes having that happen. So what can you do differently to avoid these disappointing scenarios? The most crucial thing you've gotta do is know your drop spot. Having a robust understanding of where every chest, floor loot, campfire, ice block, and freezer spawn is instantly is going to give you a serious advantage. You might be saying, well, that's obvious. Tell me something I don't know. But really, that is the most vital factor. You need to know everything about the zone inside and out. And it's part of the reason why pro players tend to always land at a single location. Let's take another look at Tifu. He's been landing at Steamy Stacks since Chapter 2 came out almost three months ago, and he still drops there nearly every match. 
because he's practiced the fastest landings, and he knows how to beat out opponents to the chimney chest and other alpha spots 100% of the time. When he gets a rifle, he can instantly apply pressure for control, but if he doesn't, he always has a backup plan. Like in this case, breaking down and looting the people below him. Which brings us to another important aspect, knowing efficient loot paths. Cause yeah, randomness is a thing with chess, and it's brutal during the early game. But if you can create a great route that maximizes the amount of loot you get, like let's say going from three chests in the first minute to six, you've now got double the weapons and double the utility just by pathing your early game a little bit better. Just to iterate, we still see so many new and inexperienced players try to hot drop only to go for chests and attics where there's like three people to a house. Now, if you're alone, it doesn't make much of a difference where you start looting. But if you've got people landing with you, you wanna try to secure as much floor loot as possible. Scout for a great weapon while gliding so that you can land on it. Or if you're dropping on a house, don't go for the single chest in the attic. Touch the rooftop, fall to the door, and go inside for immediate floor loot weapons. That always works best when you've got other players contesting your building because you'll get an instant loot advantage over everyone else. Bazinga! Now, another annoying aspect of loot randomness has to do with healing items. Not finding shields when you need them. The bane of my existence, dude. It feels as if the drop rate on shields is super low, and it really is. But it's probably like that on purpose. Epic has been adding a ton of different low RNG methods to fill up on health and shields this season. And I bet you're thinking of some right now. We've got slurp trucks on roads all around the map, mushrooms in weeping woods and slurpy swamps, campfires literally all over the place. And speaking of slurpy, that whole area with the kegs and swamp water makes it shield heaven. Oh. Most recently, they have added the ice blocks and freezers that give you fish like crazy. We went over these in a previous video. But in case you missed it, the two hottest spots to get easy fish right now are the Ice Factory in the back of Dirty Docks and the Shiver Inn Landmark just down the road from retail. Shiver Inn has a ton of ice blocks, and the Ice Factory has those. Plus, a bunch of freezers that can make filling up your shield bar a cinch. Now look, I'm not saying you have to land in these spots or model your game plan around them, but just knowing of their existence and occasionally rotating towards them when you need shields or a health top up can be a lifesaver, especially those slurp trucks. Since they're all in remote locations, they won't be contested right off the bat. Meaning as long as you're the first one there, it'll be all yours. To close things out, let's talk about battle RNG. Things like 50-50 fights and getting rushed off spawn, both of which are heavily impacted by randomness. Good. All right, so what is a 50-50 fight? In simple terms, it's a fight where the outcome isn't really decided by skill, but more often by luck. For instance, when you take a long or medium range rifle battle and Notorious Blue Mechanics picks the winner, who wants that? Randomness deciding whether you land shots or not? Ah, oh, doesn't sound too great. You mostly see new players take these fights, but even at higher arena ratings, players often go around sitting on top of ramps waiting for their enemy to peek, only to end up trading similar damage and either dying or surviving with barely any HP. But how so many pros can get kill after kill has to do with closing the gap. They create favorable openings. That would be like building to get up close then engaging into a build battle or box fight. Cause you know you gotta put all the knowledge and expertise you've required to proper use. It's go time. One of the most favorable openings out there is taking your opponent's wall and editing the corner for a right hand peek. When done quickly, it makes it next to impossible to get shot back. Or if you're in a build battle and you see your opponent slip up in their building, whoo, you can go for a trap play. That's just two of the ways you can come out on top through technique usage in close range fights. There's plenty more, so be sure to check out box fighting and technique videos on our channel. All right, so what about getting rushed off spawn? I mean, ideally, you wanna land in a way where you're isolated enough to find a full kit before fighting. But what do you do if you have an incomplete inventory and someone still comes rushing towards you? A lot of us wouldn't even think about playing it differently, but what you should do is try to play to your weapon's strength. Like if you have a gray SMG and you hear the enemy with a shotgun, you'd want to stay three or four tiles away from them. This would lower their shotgun damage significantly while still keeping your SMG fully capable. Same thing with rifles. There, creating as much room as possible is your goal. And if you had a shotgun, you, of course, would want to get up as close and utilize cover in between shots. 
All in all, Battle RNG is a tricky beast, but it's why things like structure control and proper box fighting technique exist today. Use them and you'll find yourself dying to bad bloom and randomness less often. You have made it to the end, so let's do a quick recap. You can avoid bad first circle RNG by landing closer to the center of the map. If the zone's super far away, rotate sooner so you can get a head start on the second and third zones. In those, stay positioned near the center again for the best chance of getting favored. From circle four and onward, you can play the edge. Playing in the center leads to a higher chance of getting focused and you won't ever be favored in positioning there. To reduce the impact of weapon RNG, know your landing spots, find efficient loot paths, and give yourself room to complete a full kit before engaging players. For healing RNG, there isn't much you can do other than learn all of these spots. Rotate through them and incorporate them into your play so you have more games where you're running around with full health. Avoid long range rifle battles if you can. It's better to fight up close so you can use build and box fighting techniques to win your fight. And if you find yourself with an incomplete loadout, play to your weapon's advantages any way you can. But other than all that, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please do us a favor by liking the video and subscribing. You can also support us further by using code PROGUIDES in the item shop. And remember to leave your answer to what RNG annoys you the most in the comments. Once again, my name is Cody. You can follow me on Instagram at Coco Medler. I got a question. Are you cuckoo for the Cocoa Puffs? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I will see you soon. Peace.